Good evening and welcome back to Byline. This is a public affairs show here at Amherst Media. And as you uh, know, we began last year by focusing on our new town government. We're trying to help people understand uh, the new charter and how it was playing out in our government. And from time to time, we have guests on the show who are not in the government, but who are doing things that are related to the government. And that's one of those things we're doing here in this show tonight. So two of the pillars of our town charter are civic engagement and transparency. What could be more transparent than broadcasting live the meetings of our publicly elected officials conducting their business? And so uh, we have our executive director from Amherst Media, Jim Lesko, here today. And he's going to be talking with us about uh, the impacts of both federal and state action on our local cable stations all across the country, the state, and right here in Amherst. And um, I'll just preface it by saying that from my time in the legislature, what I learned pretty quickly uh, was that most of the regulation, most of the rules, and most of what happens around cable is uh, governed at the federal level. States do have a little bit to say about it, but not all that much. And as we know in our own community, periodically a contract has to be negotiated with the provider. And one of the pieces that is on the table in those negotiations is what are we going to do to support our community access television? So with lots of stuff going on in Washington, I think that's where we should start, Jim, because over the few years that we've had this new administration, sure. uh, they've taken a new attitude uh, to cable and the relationship between cable, uh, uh, cable entities and companies and uh, the local community. So why don't you help people understand how that all works? Okay, well, thank you, Stan. It, it's, um I think if we step back for a moment, for those that might not know how the funding occurs, then I can speak to it. It, it makes more okay, sense. Fine. That each locality has an option when they have a cable provider, whoever that may be, come into them and saying, we'd like to use your public rights of way, that's your telephone poles, your viaducts, to deliver our services to your community residents. The towns have, and cities have had the opportunity to negotiate on the behalf of the citizens to get something back for that right of way. And in the past, um, one of the things I think we should point out is Amherst Media, to the best of our knowledge, is the oldest nonprofit, 44 years in the country, doing this kind of work through cable companies, money coming through the town to the organization as a nonprofit. We're the very oldest or among I the oldest? I believe we are either the oldest or second oldest. Or we're second, right, look yeah. at that. So wow. we're way up there. And, and, <laughs> yeah. and, and the Amherst should be proud of the fact that there was people here back in the mid-70s that said yeah. this is an important issue yeah. about transparency, about access to media technology, which no one had TV mm -hmm. cameras in the day. We didn't have what we have. But what comes with that package is a town and city could go up to 5% or less, but up to 5% of the revenues based on the cable revenues. The and total cable, cable revenue. Cable total. And that includes their sales, their rentals. There's a lot of mm -hmm. different line yeah. items in that. But so it's based on a subscriber base, okay? Mm -hmm. And there's a fee that's passed on to the subscriber. Let's be honest, it's not a tax, but it's a fee. And only the subscribers are actually paying back into this service that is being provided. And it's both educational, uh, use of equipment. It's about the ability for anyone to have their voices heard, to come in and be heard. It's a real early on attempt from the mid 70s to say, hey, the big three networks aren't, shouldn't be the only ones talking on TV. Mm -hmm. And then people were very fearful of cable coming in saying, hey, we don't care about your local news. We want to feed you with what's happening mm -hmm. in L.A. or what's happening somewhere else. And so a lot of the mayors and people like that were very up in arms originally around cable. So this was a way of checking back in, into that. Um, we here have just signed a contract in uh, October of 2016, I believe is when we finally signed another and it's a 10 year contract. So you can get up to 10 years. We are getting the full 5%. And we also, you can negotiate for what's called capital money. And capital improvement is equipment, basically. Mm -hmm. And that's really very important. The other thing you should know is in Massachusetts, there's 250-ish communities that have 
public education and government what's normally called And that's called out of 351 <laughs> cities and towns, so it's two-thirds, and that's, that's and pretty Some good. of them do multiple cities and towns, like Plymouth mm -hmm. has a number of towns that they serve okay. that's right outside of them. So I haven't done that breakdown, but yeah. all, there's coverage pretty much everywhere except for those, as you know, the outer Very, line. very tiny little towns right, right there. Which but even a lot of them get get coverage. Sure. Now with broadband being built out into the hill Here. towns, it's a yeah. chance for them to get more. Yeah. So to move into the federal, um, so we've always relied on all of us. And when I say Amherst Media, it's everybody else. It can be even municipally run, public education government channels. Mm -hmm. Some towns split it. The Hounder City runs the government. The schools might run the education and the public has an element. But in our case, we run all three channels. We're a small town. Mm -hmm. The federal government has kind of left it alone. They tweaked it in 1984, the Cable Act of 1984, but they, they just improved upon it with some of the technological changes. All right? What I loved about the original rules was that they, a, a cable provider could not come into a town or city and say, we're only going to go over to the rich community. They had to show you a map and say, how are you going to build out over the years to reach to everyone? cover every home. That every home has an opportunity yep, right. to plug in. They don't have to plug in, right. but they have an opportunity. So while you're negotiating, you do what's called in-kind services, too. And that's where this gets into the federal change at the FCC, the Federal Communication Commission, recently. August of 2019, it's a split board. There's three very pro-cable uh, commissioners, and there's two that I would say have are very pro-cable, but they're also consumer protection, worried about the losses mm. that's occurring with some so of these So three changes. watching out for the companies, <laughs> and two are watching out for the people. Pretty much you can go down the so line. Yeah. three to two. And unfortunately, tough. a couple of those people voting for the cable companies were uh, Obama appointees. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's not necessarily down the line of um, the politics. On partisan. Yeah, yeah. Very. So what happened in August of 2019 was the FCC made a decision to give cable the right to take in-kind services, and I'm going to explain what in-kind services can include discounts to the elderly, veterans, or the services that schools and your, your governmental buildings, your fire, your police, your town, your, your, your city government, and schools are all connected, what's called the internet, uh, internet uh, INET, excuse me, institutional network. Okay. So we call it the INET. So they're saying, all of a sudden the FCC says, you know what, Cable, you can take that in-kind and put a value to it. And if you put a value to it, deduct it from what you pay in your fees. Mm -hmm. And when we heard that, we said, well, who's going to say what the value is? And the company said, we will ourselves. So it's an in-house way of looking at the fees that are getting charged to the subscribers. It's not out of revenues. Mm -hmm. That the companies are once again going to be able to grab it coming back out the other end and saying, well, you know, we love offering you, Stan, this reduction for your, your elderly reduction, but we're going to have to make it up the difference on the discount from that revenue, mm -hmm. from the franchise fee. So that little change of that, that language could impact and will impact every access center across the country. And it could be in the millions, depending on some of the New York City, some of the large city ones. This could really hurt them, but even more so the smaller ones like ourselves. We're currently under three hundred thousand dollars a year here, so if you that's start, your overall budget, that's our b cable revenue budget. That's your cable revenue. Okay, budget. okay. That's down, you know, considerably uh, in the fiscal year twenty eighteen to the fiscal year twenty nineteen. Uh, we lost like nine percent of our funding from cable, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and a lot of that has to do with what's called the the cable cutting. Right, more people are taking from streaming. They're saying, I don't need cable anymore. I'm going to hire Hulu so and Netflix. So the subscription pool is dropping. It's dropping. As a result of fewer subscriptions, there's a loss of revenue. Right. In addition, there's a loss of revenue because of how they're calculating the in-kind? They will if the FCC stands. And we, okay. we fear that this new rule could take its effect in the mm -hmm. spring, by the springtime, by the time it trickulates so out. So your reduction in revenue has been driven by Maybe. the subscription right. rate, not by this rule, but this rule, Would be if it's upheld, right. it'll compound. Absolutely. Okay. So hopefully that's how long, how long before you know if that's going to We were hold estimating, enough. well, it's been challenged. We, have, mm -hmm. we belong to a national organization, Alliance for Community Media, who which have filed a, a, a suit. They're getting a hearing in the 6th District Court, I believe, St. Louis. And... Um, we're trying to get stay. We have the National Association of Cities, the Mayors, League of Mayors, uh, Natoya, National mm -hmm. Association of 
government, and I can never remember the full acronym. A lot of organizations are backing this and saying they, they too do not want this to happen. This mm -hmm. is going to devastate local programming. And as you pointed out, it's not just our coverage, as important that is, of government, but it's also that the people that normally don't have an, a way of expressing themselves, mm -hmm. the artists, the people of regardless of their income level or the language. Mm -hmm. A lot of churches are shown across the country get a chance to go on the air for free through cable access. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's it's got this huge impact. So what happened is luckily in Massachusetts, our good friend Senator Markey, who when he was in Congress was on the telecommunications uh Committee of, it's I one think of it's his Commerce. areas of specialty. It is, it is. And, and we're very one lucky. one of the leading voices in that area. Very, very lucky that he was. Had made it his point to try to intercede this, to interject and change the legislative, the language back in the Cable Act, back to the way it was. So getting rid of that uh, in-kind change back to the original, that franchise fees can only go to monetary fees, not in-kind. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so he was uh, joined by Representative Anna Eshu, I believe is how you say her name, from California. And she's been very, very good. In a very short period of time, they got 22 co-signers on. At this time, as you say, a lot going down in Washington. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, and they're keeping their... their, their they're, they're keeping themselves really in the mix of all the other things that are happening other than the impeachment as important as, as that is. So we're hoping that the Alliance of Community Media and the organizations that I belong to here in Massachusetts, Mass Access, of mobilizing people, mobilizing citizens and our government, our local government, to respond. There will be uh, Alliance of Community Media setting up an online platform for people to sign a petition. Mm -hmm. I will make sure the community knows about that. <clears throat> and letters are important. The FCC, when they say we just received 100,000 letters or something to that nature, they, that's a lot for them. Mm -hmm. People don't normally come up out of the, the woodwork on the, those issues. So the legislation that they filed, what would it effectively do? What is it going to say, and what would the effect of it be? It says so little. It just puts the language back in the, the way it was. So basically it overrules the, yeah. uh, the, the bureaucracy and puts it into law, which then means the bureaucracy can't right. skirt it. They have to follow that. And so you'd be going back to the status quo. Sort or we'll actually yeah. be maintaining the status maintaining quo because it, so. it hasn't yet been through the legislature. That was the argument up front. Well, it also hasn't been resolved in the courts, so right. there's a stay, presumably, and therefore they can't implement it. Right. So you haven't gotten the hit yet. Not yet, and we're, you know, this just came out. This is uh, evolving as we speak. Yeah. I'm okay. sure I'll get a phone call today that says, hey, you missed this point. But it's, so it's, it's really... be a lobbyist's... Yeah. Um, parade over the next uh, six, 12 months uh, as they try to get this piece of legislation yeah. through because the cable companies are going to oppose it. Who else is going to oppose it? You mentioned who will be supporting you. Who else are you going the, the up The telecoms, against? because the telecoms are in there. Telecommunications yeah. industry. I mean, you're looking at Verizon. Really, you don't think of them as much of cable, but they mm -hmm. still do provide some, some services. Yeah. But it's really that over-the-line streaming that a lot of them. And don't forget, companies like Comcast, who we're under, right? They bought NBC for a reason. That mm -hmm. was a, a broadcast, uh, distribution, production, and bought Universal Studios for the mm -hmm. same reason. Production and distribution. They bought Hulu very early on as a streaming component for their materials. Mm -hmm. Netflix is all of a sudden sh making movies. These people are using the same lines as of the other people that the cable has to pay us yeah. the towns that so they're all going into the, they're all going into all aspects of the yeah. telecom business same thing happened with um, banks and insurance sure. so uh, everybody wants to be in the insurance business so the bankers went into the insurance business and uh, there's a big fight that's constantly going on sure. between those two industries um, because so, the lines get blurred so back to cable you're you if everything goes well in Washington you'll be able to block that change. Yeah, the change of the in-kind, which would really take re resources out of every community television station in the country yeah. immediately if it was implemented. But as you said, who else will be up against this? It'll be all those companies that I just mentioned, Netflix mm -hmm. uh, and, and Amazon. And these are monsters. These so that's are really your large biggest companies. current threat at the federal level. Is there anything else that's... Yeah that you guys are worrying about before we focus on what we can do at the state level? Well, the federal level is always a challenge, you know, because uh, 
this administration, it is truly more than ever, the corporations have a lot of access mm -hmm. and they're reading their, their papers and implementing. So when we get um, the support of the, the Congress specifically and senators like Warren signed on and also Bernie Sanders signed on and, you know, a number of four of the candidates that are running for president have signed on to the Markey Bill in short. No. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, you know, Massachusetts were the most inundated state in the country. I mean, as you pointed out, almost every city and town is covered. So anybody that represents congressionally or even in the state here knows the importance. You yourself used it back in the day to be able to talk to the citizens of what's going on in Boston and, and keep in touch. Um, so we're, we're following it closely on the national level. We will ask people to get involved and, and sign the petitions and, and maybe some letters. I think uh, getting the town to constantly realize the citizens that we do not take out of the tax revenue. It's always been one of those mm -hmm. things, well, you get taxes, why aren't you doing this? That's not the case. And I think the second thing that we're about to talk about is the mass access bill, which is up in front of the house. So um, that is going to be dealing with another issue, continuing the issue of streaming and loss of revenue, as we pointed out that 9% we lost recently. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we really, the mass access bill, if I can get into that right now, is being uh, championed by Paul McMurtry. McMurtry. Mm -hmm. McMurtry. McMurtry. <laughs> that second hour throws me off. McMurtry. He owns a, a movie theater. Oh, nice. Up in, is it Lynn or somewhere like that? I don't remember which town, but it's in that region. Yeah, and, North and he has a, an arts background, and it's an art cinema okay. type place, like uh, Amherst, uh, the equivalent of an Amherst okay. cinema. So Mass Access, which is our statewide organization advocacy group that we belong to, has uh, worked on legislation that's looking at uh, basically uh, looking at digital entertainment. Okay, like and and seeing it as a as something that really needs uh, to be dealt with because that's the lost revenue that we just mentioned, right? That that digital entertainment's coming across the same poles that cable has to pay for to use in the localities, but the other entertainment streaming coming in is not. So it's not a level playing field by any means. And you would think, except for those that own both, that they would be on our side of doing that. Like, mm -hmm. you know, let's get some of that money. <clears throat> so what came up was this idea of uh, putting a fee on, on that service uh, that the state would implement. And what, was, what I really was amazed at how many uh, representatives and, and senators signed on at this moment. It, it, there's like over 85. Mm -hmm. And that's a fa for a fast track. This has started uh, early fall. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, because we're down there constantly talking about HD, the need for high definition and cable and other things, there's a relationship that we have with a lot of the representatives. So this bill is really looking at charging a, a fee that the state can collect and, and create a, a uh, distribution network, if you will, that would look at the state getting 20% of revenues Re returned on this twice a year billing and 40% to the municipalities and 40% to media access centers. So it's a revenue generating for everybody. It's not just a media access center way of trying to get money for ourselves. It's also, we know the towns and cities with prop two and a half and everything else that's there under. Everyone's doing overrides and, 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 and trying to figure out how to deal with these huge capital improvement that there's a need for new revenue. And, and this is an opportunity to really look at this as a way for the town and cities across the state to re, re, receive quite a bit of revenue. At the same time, everyone I ask in Amherst say, Amherst Media is so important. You know, it's too bad cable's dying. Well, what are you going to do to save it? What are you going to do? What kind of funding rec mechanism are we going to put in place that guarantees another 44 years? So is this a new idea or in place in other states? It's in place. and That's a, a good question. I was surprised to hear how many states have already started programs like this that included diverse states from Florida, Minnesota, Ohio, Pennsylvania. Uh, it's almost like 12 states either have something in place or, or have something in motion. Mm -hmm. uh, quite a few cities on their own have done so uh, in Colorado and I believe in, uh, in Illinois. So the dozen states, it's already law in those states or it's law in some of those states some. and it's still a proposal in others? Yes, it, okay. it's some in there. And uh, so help us with the, uh, the, the math here. So I have a $20 subscription to a streaming service a month. So I'm paying $240 a year. 
on that. Did I do my math correctly? Yes. So I've got a $240 subscription over the course of the year. Approximately how much if the proposal goes into effect? 5% would be 12? 5%. So we're going to pay $12. And of that, 40% is going to come here. So about eight. Eight dollars. Well, it'll be based on population size. I mean, they have a formula that they're going to create. Uh, so it'll be. It's not going to be uh, uh -huh. a per subscription right. headcount in my town. Uh, not it's going to be a formula across yeah. the state. More like okay. a cherry sheet approach, yeah. I think. Okay. And I think that makes it a little bit more equal, mm -hmm. you know, because your costs can so be. So do you know what the in millions the total? No, uh, I, I know the industry be, recently yeah. went to a hearing that was held down at the state house, and, and their estimate was. Oh, they were saying hundreds and hundreds of millions, and we don't think it's that high necessarily. You think it's tens of tens of millions? Yeah, I, I really, I haven't, I don't have the numbers to crunch. Mm -hmm. okay. So okay. you know, <laughs> uh, but I would think with the number of colleges in Massachusetts alone, yeah. if you're if you're looking at it that way, then you're looking at a lot of people on those individual accounts mm -hmm. yeah so I mean I think it's a proactive way to deal with this other countries have done this South mm -hmm. Korea has it as a, a, a statewide tax a countrywide mm -hmm. uh, and Canada different provinces have implemented it and you know it's India even has done it which is a huge country for that kind of you know need mm -hmm. but we're, we're really saying like if you really expect the services you're getting, no matter where you are, but let's say in Amherst, mm -hmm. and you can, if you're watching us lose 10% based on cable cutting, and it continues to maybe go down to five per year, or you're going to eventually see us not be able to present the way we present mm -hmm. and cover what we cover, and 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 we, I like to say we're a hybrid in a very small town. Mm -hmm. And with the, it's not just government, it's the ability to bring in experts and, and people in issues that are not, you know, just Amherst based, but the people that we bring in in connecting points and, and other things like that, that the community connections it, it, and children's programming. And we do a lot that just you won't be able to do. You mentioned connecting point, that's WGBY. No, I mean, uh, yeah, bring community that connections. Is oh, community connections. Okay. Yeah. I just didn't know whether you were also rebroadcasting no. some shows from. They're very. Uh, very hands-on to their own stuff. I would like yeah. to see us go into a regional distribution of, of mm -hmm. using each other's, and, and that's another thing to come. Yeah. But the other aspect is if, if we, as I mentioned to you before we came on the air, we're losing print media everywhere in the country. Everyone's bemoaning the fact you pick up the paper, it costs more and it's fewer pages. Mm -hmm. We've lost hundreds, of, you know, thousands of people have lost jobs in the industry. The affiliates, as you and I grew up in this area, the 22, 40, and 3, they actually used to come out and cover town and issues that were, you know, they're nowhere to be found covering any of the issues unless it, it's a big party at UMass mm -hmm. or something. You know, it's yeah. not, they're not here. So you're left with the access centers who are covering local government to give you gavel to gavel. Yeah. Now, that's not the perfect way of watching and getting your news, but it is a way of knowing and keeping an eye on what government is doing. And your, your, your show here is doing that and helping people understand the complexities that are behind this, right? Mm -hmm. So we're, we're part of that, but more importantly is that loss of the education, the access by people to equipment that wouldn't normally have the access to learn. A lot of our interns are from the colleges have gone on. This has been a great opportunity for them to, to go out into their communities or to get jobs in the businesses. So, I mean, there's multiple things that we do. It's an economic development engine in many ways. In the final couple of minutes, it uh, might be helpful for people to understand generally your budget. You mentioned 300000 that comes from the uh, cable system as okay. a result of the negotiated agreement. I know we have a contract that's going a few more years, and eventually they'll sit down and renegotiate. But right now it's about 300000 a year, Unless. assuming mm -hmm. that the federal government doesn't take away the next 10% right. with this new policy. So um, what are the other sources of revenue by category and just rough figures so we can build it up in our minds and understand what it takes to run sure. a, a quality local uh, cable access station? Well, we're allowed to, as a nonprofit, to do for production, production for profit, mm -hmm. you know. And so we, we do a lot for the community, the colleges. Uh, we'll get asked, will we cover a lecture? Well, so we'll f charge a small fee for that. Or TEDx at Amherst College, we've done for a number of years at a higher rate. Mm -hmm. um, we, we need to do more production. That the, What we're set up to do that can generate some income in here to help balance our sheets. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things that um, comes up, you know, we're trying to get a new facility that's costing 
raising money. And, and in those meetings at the local historic district, people keep saying, we love what you do, but what if you go under and you, don't, you lose all your funding? What's your building going to be? Well, I would think that you turn on that. If we're so wonderful, how are you all going to help? What are you mm -hmm. going to do to pitch in and hire us or to donate money or to help us move? So we're a combination of for service, paid for services, donations, and, and membership at the moment. And does the town provide any direct no. funding? Uh, so uh, the services that involve putting uh, the select board, uh, sorry, the uh, town council on uh, on your site, um, that is absorbed as part of your normal operating budget. Yeah, that's under our contract, very specifically what we have mm -hmm. to do under that. And that's understandable. We're getting, yeah. the money's getting given to us for a very specific, right. but we're also engaged. And the source of that revenue, though, is the cable subscribers. Yeah, exactly. The, okay. We don't get anything from the, the town. There is no line item for us yeah. in that budget. Okay. That's what I thought, but I just wanted to, no, I uh, to make sure. So um, you, must, uh, you must be doing reasonably well on your uh, production services that you, that you sell. Um, you're not really in much competition with anybody around here. There's independent people. There are some yeah, there in in companies, and we have to make sure we're not, you know, that fine really, line yeah. competing with that fine line or under undercutting too much. But there, you're allowed more these days than in the past as a nonprofit mm -hmm. to create funds. Um, so we, we want people. We like to have shows like yours underwritten. Mm -hmm. We're starting to talk about that. It's mm -hmm. like many stations across the tele, uh, community access centers have underwriting. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, as we move forward, can we bring the journalists from UMass in? Can we start expanding and giving this community more coverage that it deserves? There's so much going on up here in the area that really is uh, worthy of that kind of coverage. Great. Well, thanks for coming on and explaining a little bit more for those of us who don't know a whole lot other than how to put it on and watch it, <laughs> how you actually put it together and pay for it. So thank you for joining us and thank you for joining us and we'll see you again soon on another show.